are we recording? Yes, we're recording. Hey guys, how are you doing? So, <laughs> small bump here in the OBS. Uh, so today we're going to continue with the obelisk. We're going to go on to the UVs, but before that, I want to show you something something very cool. So, as you can see here, the Alopol is pretty much ready. It took me a little while, probably like an hour. Uh, this is our, these are the kind of things where, where you definitely want to spend a little bit of extra time. But now, I want to show you like this sort of stuff. Like, you can see that the obelisk was... Um, asymmetrical right so so we modeled it in such a way that some details are present on one side but not on the other and that means that we're gonna have to adapt a little bit so for instance here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add two edge loops here i am gonna delete this faces right here which is where the little hole is and i'm gonna use the vertex that we have here on the edges that we just deleted to create sort of like a border for uh these uh for the construction of this detail so what i'm gonna do here for instance is just create a small face there there it's kind of like a like a like the topology that we did for the eyes remember it's just kind of like a loop here and the main reason why i want to keep this as a loop is so that eventually we're going to be able to stitch the sides of this loop onto the edges of the of the whole thing oh, that that's annoying me so let's just close this up there we go so we're going to close like this see so we just stitch this, and we're creating a topology inside of the um, of the element that's gonna nicely cover the the hole that we have there, uh, without adding any more extra topology to the other places. We could actually delete like this edge loops right here, and uh, just triangulate. But I think it, it it looks okay, so so we can leave it like that. Just keep it simple. Uh, same deal, for instance, over here. You can see like here, this this uh, corner right here has a little bit of a bump, like a big bump. So it might be a better idea to just rebuild a little bit of the topology here. So this is a process that I often do when the objects are asymmetrical. I will do half of it and then I will mirror it and work on each of the like important parts of the element. So I'm listening to some nice covers on the side and it's pretty cool. Do you guys like rock? I really like rock. I would say my favorite music is probably uh, rock and uh, what was it uh, when I was a, a young kid? Well, not young kid. But when I was in high school, uh, my favorite band, and I still say that uh, that they're my favorite band from all times. It's uh, My Chemical Romance. I really like My Chemical Romance, and um, I, I think there was a debate back then, probably still going, whether or not they were punk. And I think they were punk or rock. I think that was like the proper uh, like uh, category category for them. I don't know what category they were, but they were cool. I, I really like the band and the, and the songs. So yeah, let we, let's go here. So I'm going to use my cut tool here. I'm going to create a small triangle. This is another way in which we can add detail. So I'm just going to start like adding extra polygons here. There we go. And then with my element here, I'm just going to relax. So see how these things are conforming to the overall shape there. That's what we want. Whenever we're doing this sort of stuff, we want things to to conform in the best possible way. To the silhouette that we that we want, and of course, uh, every every game is going to be slightly different, or every project is going to be slightly different. Sometimes you're going to have a lot of polygons to work with, and sometimes the poly budget is going to be really, really, really low. Uh, my best advice for those kind of things is if you're working on a project where the the poly budget is really low, like like a mobile game or uh, I don't know, like a super minimalistic thing or something, I I strongly advise that you try and do like very simple silhouettes on your on your uh, models because the more complex the silhouette is the more polygons you're going to need and the, the more difficult it becomes to to optimize because there's just no easy way to to get an interesting silhouette without uh investing on the polygons um i've had clients um i've had some uh, not not issues but just like uh, discussions with the clients with some clients where they're like hey we want to make this character uh, we want him to have like a ton of spikes and a ton of like blades and stuff. He's like a super assassin kind of guy. And it's like, yeah, sure, we can do that. I mean, for what is this? And they're like, oh, it's for a mobile game. It's like, oh, you do know that uh, that means that we're going to have to optimize a lot of the character. And they're like, no, 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 we want to have like a really high uh, poly character, like 30K. And like, that's not how mobile works. So sometimes your job as a, as a 3D artist is also to... to um, 
I wouldn't say teach, rather like educate your clients because uh, a lot of the times the people with the money, the investors or, or the clients, they they are not too super familiar with the uh, with the production pipeline. So they might think that certain things are in a way or, or they work in a way and uh, it's totally the opposite, right? So, so you're gonna have to, to, in a very polite, of course, and in a very empathetic way, show them why the things that they want might not be possible. It especially happens when it's someone that has no experience in the 3D world. Um, so let's say, I don't know, like a dentist wants to do like a little short for uh, for his uh, uh, like office, right? Like uh, some sort of like commercial for like Instagram or Facebook or what have you. Uh, and they're like, how much is that? And you're like, well, it's quite expensive. We need to do the character and the rigs and the textures. Like, oh, I thought it was just like a cartoon, 30 seconds or something. It's like, yeah. <laughs> There's way more things that go into the into the production, right, than just a cartoon. So yeah, that's it, guys. As you can see, this is pretty much done. Now, this does not mean this is gonna be the final. Um, what's the word? The final low poly. I'm gonna do a bake test. We're gonna do a bake test after we finish the UVs here, real quick. And then if we see that there's certain areas where UVs look a little bit wrong, then we're just gonna fix them. Now here I'm gonna go into mesh tools and I'm gonna say, sorry, mesh display, I'm gonna say soft edge. Now this might create some weird shadowing here, which it's it's not ideal, especially on this like hard edges here on the, on the corners. So I might wanna go to this like hard edges right here and introduce the hard edge again. So go mesh display, harden edge. The reason why we like to have soft and hard edges is for the normals to read a little bit better. And in this particular thing, since this is a very sharp object, right? Uh, especially on the, on the sides here. Uh, or, or let's give it a go. Let, let's try with the soft edges first. And then if we see that we need the, the support, we're gonna use hard edges. Because again, the, the only reason why I wanna use soft edges is you can see some of the fragmentation there on some of the low polys. And I don't like that, so mesh display. Let's try soft and edge, even if we have those like very ugly black looking things, don't worry. So I'm gonna grab the whole thing here and I'm gonna say um, UVs, planar mapping. We're gonna do camera based projection, keep image with high ratio, there we go. And now we're gonna use our UV 3D code and so UV tool. And you guys are my students, you already know how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I did not add anything on the underside here, which I think we should. Let's say it's super easy. I'm just gonna extrude, whoop, extrude the whole edge. Let's go in just a little bit like this, just like a little lip. And I'm gonna say mesh, fill hole, grab this thing, edit mesh, poke. Okay, no need to go like, no need to reinvent the wheel. We can just do that and, and that's totally fine. No one's ever gonna see that, the bottom side of the thing. Uh, so let's do another UV real quick. There we go. And now we're gonna use our UV 3D cut and so UV tool and we're gonna start cutting. So you guys are my students and you know how I like to do my UVs. So I'm gonna start down here. And then usually you want UVs to be in areas that are easy to hide. So for instance, the border here in between the steps, that's a very easy area we can use to, you know, um, add like dirt and, and sand and stuff to, to hide the, the seam. Like inside of this area might be another very good place to, to do this. Now these two pillars, uh, we definitely need to separate them. So again, this like inner line here should be a good idea to go right about there. And on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing, just finishing the loop there. So we're gonna have this little like diamond shape and then uh, this elements right here. Now these elements are like, um, what's the word, like uh, cubes. So I think it might be a good idea again to go through this line like here, just so we get like the inner side of the whole obelisk separated from the from the other side. There we go. Again, it's just to to help the unfold work a little bit better. That's that's one of the great things about the newer softwares like a Substance, the, which you guys know I love. Um, you don't have to worry that much about uh, unfolding because there's a lot of tricks to, to just like paint uh, the, the textures in such a way that they just work. So for instance, this one, I think it's just gonna work. Now I am gonna have one extra cut here on the upper side. And the only reason why I'm doing this is if we were to keep like this very big uh, UV faces, 
then we're going to be wasting a lot of space in the UV space. So by doing a couple of extra cuts here, we're going to have like the upper part, the lower part, and then like this big block here. Now this, this big block also needs a little bit of a cut. Otherwise, uh, things are not going to unfold nicely. And uh, I, I remember we have a very important like crack there. So I'm going to go through here. There you go. Like that. And down here. Uh, I might want to separate the four faces, or at least two faces, like this face, this face, and then just keep this one like that. I think this is going to work. So let's give this a go in the in the unfold section. You editor. And we're going to grab this whole thing. Unfold and unfold. Uh, not bad, but also not perfect. There's this weird thing right here, which I don't like. Uh, where is this? Oh, yeah, of course, the top of the obelisk. So I'm just going to say UV, cut UV edges. And I think that one's the same one. So UV, cut UV edges. Let's turn this off for just a second. Let's do modify and do another unfold. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. I mean, texture wise, there's not a lot of deformation. In general, it looks good. So let's try a layout. So modify uh, layout. And uh, yeah, that, that looks like a good UV map. Yep, I like it. You can see the, the distribution of squares is, is fairly consistent. There is a little bit of distortion, but since this is gonna be, there's not, there's not gonna be any like weird textures or anything, we can, we can work with this. Um, yeah, I mean, we could alleviate a little bit of the, of the pressure that we have here with the 3D cotton so UV tool. So if we cut just uh, like a couple corners here, like this so think about we all i hope we all like assembled like a cube like a paper cube when we were in school here in mexico um we have the the sep which is the um the education's uh, ministry or you know it's the government thing in charge of education in all the the country and they provide uh free books to everyone every kid uh and uh in one of those books i remember there were like uh, your basic geometry shapes in paper. So you had to cut them and, and fold them. So when you grab a cube and you unfold it, it's, it's very similar. You, you need to like unfold every single side of the cube uh, before you can do this sort of uh, thing. So now let's take a look here. Now I did see a little bit of wasted space, not so much, but just a little bit. And um, we might be able to get a little bit more out of it if we do a couple more cuts. So let me just Try one more unfold. So you can see how that unfolds a little bit better. And I'm just going to say modify and layout. So yeah, there's a little bit of, of wasted space. Not that much. I mean, I'm thinking about like cutting here and here, but I don't think it's going to really make that much of a difference. So now let's let's give it this a try. So I'm going to grab the high poly. I'm going to say file, export selection. And of course, in our assets folders on the obelisk, I'm going to export this as obelisk obelisk let's call this high and i'm gonna add r add in an r just to know that that's ready just wait for this to export grab the low poly do the same thing uh well of course just mesh display soft match to make sure that that's there i am gonna assign a new material though or uh, just just the lambert for now file export selection and it's gonna be obelisk low now let's open substance real quick now, this video is not going to go super long. We're not going to go into the texturing uh, portion of it just yet. Uh, I'm just going to see how the bakes look, see if they look good. And if they do, then that's it. If not, let's, we're going to tweak a couple of things in the in the low poly, and then we'll keep going. Uh, next week, guys, next week we're going to be working on tips and tricks. It's just going to be uh, some fast, uh, short videos because I need to focus on the next course, and that means that I need to dedicate a little bit more time on that sort of stuff. Uh, but I'm taking all of your, your considerations or your, all of your questions into account. And, um, and we're going to be doing that. So, yeah. Let's go here. New. Uh, we're going to do 4K. Okay. Because it's a very big asset. And now let's go to our obelisk. The low R. Direct is fine. We're not using them, So, we need... We, we, we check that out. And we hit OK. 
I'm gonna say file. Oh, sorry, texture set settings. Uh, bake mesh maps. I'm gonna bake this at 4K. And we're gonna select the obelisk high. And let's give it a go just with this. Let's see how this goes, how this looks. I'm mostly concerned about the corners, making sure that the corners are, are looking good. So hopefully they will be looking good. ID looks good. Ambient occlusion looks really good. Really good. Look at that. Clean. Uh, curvature is going to be super obvious. Very nice. Okay, so let's take a look at the normal maps. And yeah, you can see that it, like everything looks sharp. There's no, there's a little bit of issues there. You can see them, look at that. So here on the inside, that's a little bit concerning. Um, yeah, so I think it's only there. Everything, every, everywhere else, things seem to be holding pretty damn nice, if I may say so myself. Okay, so let's solve that. That's a very quick and easy fix. Uh, the reason why that is why that is happening is because remember the, the last thing we did was the live boolean on the on the rhomboid shape up here, so that might have made it a little bit difficult for for the normal mass to work properly. So I'm just gonna grab this six sides right here, where the thing connects. I'm just gonna say mesh display, harden edge. So the, everything is gonna be soft except for those edges. I can also see, like. This edge right here, it's a little bit weird. So I'm just gonna like, oop. I'm gonna grab that one and that one. I'm just gonna flatten it. And using the, the obelisk as, as a reference point, let's see if we can. No, let's go back. Let me check here. Because I'm not sure if it's the, see that weird shadowing there? That one. That's a, that's a weird one. Okay, let's go back. Let's keep the hard edges for now only. Or again, just that one. Mesh display, harden edge. There we go. Is there an issue with the topology? No. Mm -hmm. Mesh display, soften edge on those. Okay, I'm going to say mesh display. Unlock normals just to make sure that nothing's locked. Yeah, everything seems to be okay. I'm just gonna export this again. File, export selection, uh, uh, low R. Yes, go back here. I'm gonna say edit project configuration. Just reload the low. Uh, hit OK. So now this is the reloaded element. We of course need to do another bake. Let's focus on the top part to see if this gets fixed. It should. Dharma should be looking a little bit. See that 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 weird face. It's uh. It's weird that there's something wrong on the face. I'm not sure what that could be. That's why I mentioned that ninety degree angles are the enemies of uh, of bakes because of that particular element. So it looks a little bit better here. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Once we place something like a like a concrete uh, element here, that should help like hide a little bit of that like normal effect. Um, so I I'm gonna keep it like that for now. It's not the proper thing to do, uh, I but I do wanna solve this issue right there. Like there's a there's like a weird triangle in there, and I'm not sure why. So sometimes what you need to do is delete the faces and then rebuild them. So do another like bridge here and a bridge here, bridge here and a bridge here. That that's that should be one way to fix them. I'm of course gonna have to grab these two faces and say mesh display, soften edge. And it might be, Could be the direction. It's, it's a little bit weird. Could be this vertex right here then. Oh yeah, you see that? So it might be a little bit too much for this guys. Let's try adding one edge loop 
Oh, see that? Okay, that, that immediately tells me the problem. So as you can see here, when I try to add this loop right here, it's not going through the whole thing. So that means that uh, there are engons or some sort of issues here. So yeah, I can see it right here. Okay, so fixing, let's fix this. I am gonna go here, 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 and then here, 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 and here. And that should uh, fix that. And then I can see that this vertex right here, it's not like completely combined or something. So this guy, let's just merge to center, merge to center and merge to center. There we go. See how now everything smooths nicely. Now that does mean that the UV might have changed a little bit. I mean, the cuts are, are where they're supposed to be, but the, the shading and everything might be slightly wrong. So I'm going to say again, uh, mesh display, soft edge. I'm also going to try something different for this uh, borders right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bevel them. So especially like, I'll probably stop about there. So this two, this two, three guys. Well, since we're going all the way to this little border, let's go there. I'm just going to bevel. And this small bevel should help me with the with normal maps, should help me with the, with the capture of the normal maps. On the bevel, though, I am going to change the uh, type of filtering to uh, uniform so that we don't have any angons. Mm, I don't think we have any angons right now. And down here, of course, we do have a couple of angons, which are super easy to fix. Just from here to here, and from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. This is one of the time consuming parts of the of the production pipeline. Since we're doing this as, a, as an actual like production uh, asset, I can't cheat my way through this. I need to make sure that everything looks exactly as it should. So now I am a little bit worried about the UVs. Let's see. Okay, no, they did transfer there nicely. Let's go up here. Okay, there's a little bit of a weird cut there, but not nothing too like out of the ordinary there. There we go. So. Yeah, let's go to the UV editor, of course. Give it another unfold, just to make sure that the new geometry is, is uh, taking into consideration here. I did forget to cut this guy still. So, cut, UV shell, modify, unfold. There we go, and then grab everything, modify, uh, layout, there we go. Grab the whole thing. I'm gonna say uh, mesh display, unlock normals, mesh display, soften edge. See that th th that weird shading right there? Still not convinced. Not sure what's going on. Like everything is soft on this side, but then on this side we have those like weird looking polygons. And I can see that it's this two triangles. I'm just gonna delete them. Maybe even this two guys. Let's delete them, and then let's just rebuild. I'm gonna rebuild in a different way. So from here to here, mirror, and from here to here mirror and then we're gonna leave the triangles on this side so uh, edit mesh or mesh tool sorry ah, edit mesh mesh fill hole and fill hole now we should be able to mesh display soft edge and there we go so everything is soft now perfect now let's take a look again at the uvs and see if we if things are still uh, almost there we just missed this line right there so uv 3D cut, and we're gonna cut right there. We do another uh, modify unfold because the geometry uh, changed, of course. Things look nice there. We're gonna say modify layout, finally, one final time. And there we go, we even get a little bit more resolution. Delegate history, first transformation, center pivot, the usual things. Export selection, we're gonna export this again as the low um, obelisk. Edit, project configuration, we're gonna reload the low uh, element here. You can see that UV is no longer matched. That's totally fine and expected. Let's delete this guy. Texture set settings, bake mesh maps, 4K. And I'm actually gonna go into the anti-aliasing. I'm gonna say two by two. I'm gonna bake this real quick. And uh, yeah, so let's just wait a little bit here.
I'm gonna pause real quick, guys. Just wait for this to finish. Very well. So we're back, and yeah, as you can see, the the amount of like damage that we have here is like quite less than what we had before. The only way to to fix this sort of damage is to uh, go back into Seabrush, sculpt, or get rid of the 90 degree angle, and and try to fade in those normals, but. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit longer, so I, I don't want to run this series super super long Hopefully you understand the principles of what we're doing and you can apply it uh, yourself So that's it for this one guys I'm gonna stop it right here and in the next one We're gonna be talking about texturing so hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye. Bye